Hi guys, this is going to be the tutorial that's going to show you how to make this rug. It's a very textured rug. To make this rug, I used this Elise Superlana, and I'll try to find some information about this and put it on the pattern page. It's 100 grams and 280 meters and 307 yards. This was also 100 grams or 3.53 an ounce and I used two and a half. I used underneath it, as you can see here, I sewed this on. I'll get a little closer for you. I just did a basic sew in and out around the sides. Try to leave some uh, extra here where you're not sewing it. Also make sure that you have your yarn over the plastic. If not, then you'll see the plastic when it's on the ground. So you wanna make sure that you have that covered so the yarn comes out and then you start sewing a little ways down. Also, the stuff I used was, um, I don't know if it has a name and it's in Hebrew, but it is made to go in cabinets or in drawers to protect it. Pick it up and touch the material. You can feel that hard rubber on one side. You know that it's gonna hold it to the floor. You wanna make sure that you get some stuff that's rubbery enough and thin enough that you can put a tapestry needle through it. And this stuff is just that, and it's, it's cheap. It only costs about $4. So you're gonna need your hook, your yarn, and also you're going to need a tapestry needle because you're going to need strong enough and a long enough tapestry needle to be able to go through your, the plastic that you choose. Okay, to begin this rug, you really wanna use a double crochet foundation stitches because if you use a chain, uh, to chance it could uh, really pull. You really want it to be even throughout, so I really highly recommend that you go ahead and do the, the double crochet foundation stitches. And you need 55 for this, for either of the size that I made, I did 55 to begin with, and then it was just all about the length for how long I wanted the rug. But this is for the width. If you want it wider, then add more uh, single crochet, I mean uh, double crochet foundation stitches. Okay, how to do a double crochet foundation stitch is you want to start off by chaining three. The first chain is counted as the chain, then the next two chains are counted as a double crochet. So you have three chains, the chain and the double crochet. Now you're going to be making your second double crochet of the row. So you want to yarn over, you want to go into that first um, chain that we did, pull up a loop, three loops on your hook. You want to yarn over, pull through that very first loop, which creates the chain for this next stitch. And then you will yarn over and complete your double crochet as normal, going through two and then two. Then you'll want to repeat that. Again, if you look to, if you pull it to the side, maybe you can recognize that this is the double crochet and the double crochet is coming out of the chain stitch may help you find that chain stitch a little bit better. That's the one we're going to be using to make our next double crochet. So you'll yarn over, go into that first chain stitch that we did uh, when we made our first double crochet foundation stitch and you want to pull up a loop through that. Then yarn over, pull through the first loop only which creates our chain for this stitch and this will also be the stitch we'll be using to make our next double crochet foundation stitch, so mark that if you have to, hold it if you have to, and then you finish your double crochet as normal. Then you can chain one, yarn over, and since you've held it, maybe you can find it a little easier, you want to go into that chain stitch. You're essentially link linking your chains down as you go. So you only go through one and now you've created the, the chain for this stitch, and then you do the stitch on top of it. Chain one, yarn over, go into that chain stitch again, pull through one, then finish your double crochet as normal. Don't forget after each one you want to chain one, yarn over, and then go into that chain stitch. And you want to do this until you have a total of 55 and this chain two at the beginning will count as a stitch. 
Okay, for the purposes of this tutorial, I'm, I'm only doing a small piece. I'm not doing a 55 uh, row. I'm doing a, I think a 13 here. So once you've got your 55 double crochet foundation stitches uh, to the width that you want, do 55 or more. When you're ready to start row two, you want to chain seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Then turn. And now we're going to be working on the post of our stitch. You won't be working on the very first post. You're going to be working on the second post of the row. And the multiples of this stitch is one. So that you can just make it as wide as you want. You don't have to worry about it being odd or an even number that you end with. You won't be using the very first one though. You'll be using the second. But that doesn't mess with the multiples. So go ahead and pick up the post of that next stitch and you want to slip stitch that chain onto it. Then you'll chain seven again. Three, four, five, six, and seven. Then I'm trying to make it to where you can see a little easier. This is the first loop that you did. Okay, you're too heavy. You keep rolling on me. So this is the, the first one that we skipped and then you did the chain of seven when you turned and we just attached it to the first post of our row. And then as soon as you do a slip stitch to attach your chain, you will immediately go and do another chain of seven. You can also reduce the amount of the loop that you have or even increase the amount of the size of the loop that you have by adding more of a chain. I thought five is a little short, I always like seven, so I stuck with seven. So when you've got your chain of seven, you go under the next post and slip stitch. And then again, chain seven. And then move on down to the very next post, pick it up, and do a slip stitch. And you want to continue that all the way down your row even into your very last post of the stitch, I mean of your row. So you want to do it here as well. Okay, I'm just coming to the very last double crochet of my row, slip stitching my last chain seven. And you can see already you created a row of loops. Now to begin your next row, that was row two actually. So for row three, you want to chain three and turn. That chain three counts as the very first double crochet of your row, so just going on up that that is all the same on the same line here. Then you want to find your second double crochet of your row and you'll double crochet in the top of it. So your chain three counts as your first double crochet of the row. Then you just want to put one double crochet in each of your stitches where you have a double crochet oh. you want to put a double crochet in your double crochets make sure at the end of this row that you count your stitches and that you end up with 55 again You want to make sure when you get to the end here that you don't crochet over this last chain seven by accident. I usually find my stitch here and I'll fold it back and over just to make sure I can go into that stitch without grabbing that chain seven here on the end. When you get done, very important, count your stitches. I had 13, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, and then my chain on the end is 13. So that is the end of row three. For row four, it's just a repeat of row two. And what you do is just chain seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and turn. And again, you don't want to go through that first, you want to go through the second. 
So I'm just going to go right under that post and slip stitch. And then immediately chain 7 and then find your next post of your double crochet and slip stitch. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Then find your next post and slip stitch. And you want to continue this down your row just like you did for row two. Continue putting chaining seven and putting your loops attaching them to your double crochets and I'll go ahead and show you what this pattern looks like at the end. And this is what your row looks like at the end of row four. Now for row five it's just a repeat of I guess it wouldn't be row one it'd be row three when you did your row of double crochets. So at the end of a row where you did your loops and your next row repeat will always be a chain of three and then you turn and then you chain three counts as your first remember so you want to just do a double crochet starting in the second double crochet and then you'll continue to do your double crochets all the way to the end of your row and then when you got to the end of your row your very last one again you're going to chain seven and turn and then connect it to the second uh, post of your row now now that I showed you how to do the stitch, back that up a minute. I wanted to to talk to you guys about my my rug and how it came out. Now, when I made the smaller one, uh, the smaller rug, I stopped short because it was kind of pooling on one side, and I decided I would go ahead and try to attach it to the back of plastic and see if I could fix it, and it did fix it some. And so I decided, okay, I would I would make a longer one and see if I could fix it. So I did. I went ahead. And I made a you know one that was five skeins long, and again I was able to fix it except for a very small corner that kind of pokes out, and it doesn't bother me. But my thinking on it was it was the fact that it's kind of going to the side when you attach your hoop or when you attach your loop, you're attaching it to the second. And not the first I mean you're not going like chaining seven and then going right directly into the stitch let me show you maybe I should have left these like this so like when you chain seven three four five six and seven and you turn you don't go right into the double crochet you're coming out of so you don't like go into this post and slip stitch and you can and it may make it to where it's more I guess even in the end it won't make it poof out poke out to the side some I'll do another one here there's this one and then oh I guess you can't because in the end you're gonna come from here either way even if you looped here you chain still you're going to have to go to the next one eventually if not you're going to have two three loops so to be honest I don't know if there is a way that you can can fix that problem it's like it the way that the stitch is it always wants to slightly pull to the side but like I said I was able to kind of fix it somewhat by using uh, this plastic and what I would do let me show you Sorry if it's incredibly loud. Okay, so I would use the straight edge here and I would line up my my rug right up on the side of it. So I would put my flat side up to the side and then I would lay it all down and then I would try my best when I was sewing it to make sure that it stayed. Now when sewing this, you want to make sure that you're over a little bit. So you don't want it to be like right even because there's a chance the plastic will show up even when the rug is like this. You actually want to overlap it a little on the sides and on the top. So you want it to be like about like that. 
so that way when you sew it it can move and whatnot and you're still never going to see the plastic so don't do it don't do it like that don't line it up perfectly you want to overlap slightly when you sew so whatever piece that you have here just keep in mind it doesn't have to be exactly the same it can be smaller so as you can see I left some of the material on the outside and I got my tapestry needle and I put it inside going one way and then went back through up and then I tied I used that tail and I tied it and this is what you see here is the the tie that I later kind of hid under one of the other stitches kind of loosely and then I just made my way slowly all the way down to the end and at the end uh, when it was all said and done I think I even cut the plastic on the sides even down further in some places that it might have been showing but just uh, make your way around and use the straight edges to make sure that yours is always straight it was easier for me because it was see-through that you can see the lines so if the line was kind of starting to go to the side or tilted I could easily move it up and make sure it stayed a line in a, in a line so if you, I recommend do this uh, with something clear where you can see through to the other side. It will help you be able to keep it straight. So that's it guys. I hope that you liked this tutorial. If you did, please don't forget to like and share and comment down below. It helps me out so much. Also, if you go to the main, sub, uh, the main subscribe button on my YouTube page, right next to it there's a little bell button. If you click that, you'll always be notified whenever I release a new tutorial. If you're wondering about the hooks that I had in uh, my video here, this is a wooden furls hook and this is a streamline hook. If you order the, the wooden furls hook, I recommend that you buy the extended hook unless they've changed it. And this one I ordered with the extended hook, but it was way too long. So I wouldn't recommend for the streamline for you to order an extra hook, uh, extended hook, sorry. But you can find all that information down below. Also, I have a crochet group on Facebook called Crochet for the Masses. You can find that link down below as well. Uh, come over there and share what pictures you're, you're, of your projects that you're working on, ask questions. We really like to, to share and, and just be together in the group. It's a really fun group. I hope to see you there. So that's it guys. Thank you so much for watching.